pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, accept a motion to approve the agenda as presented. So moved. I'll second it. All right, we have a first, we have a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Sorry. Thank you. All right, so we'll jump right into discussion items. First thing on the discussion items list are student board representative interviews. Who wanted to go first? Don't jump to the front, guys. Good evening. Thank you for coming down. This is Christina. Right? Yes. Yeah. Is it with a K or a C? What's your last name, Christina Bucalo? Will you spell that? R U V A L C A B. And did it have a relative on my board before? Yeah, I believe so. Abel's your. Andreas was Andreas. Yeah, he's my cousin. All right. He was on, I think, a year or two ago. Yeah. yeah. Maybe last, last year. year. Yeah. Well, that's a positive. Right? So, how were you related to Abel? Is he like your uncle? Yeah, he's the one that dropped you. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I would have went and harassed him a little bit. <laughs> I know he knows you. It's funny. Yeah, he played football with my sons. Heck of a nice guy. Yeah. All right. So, we've got a few questions here. Um, I'll probably start here, and the three of us are here. We'll ask you the questions. There's, of course, no wrong answer. We just want to know a little more about you. So, we'll start off. It says, uh, Tell you a little and bit. Oh. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. Are we going to put the camera on Christina so we could see her? Oh, on Zoom? I forgot about that. We should put the microphone over there too, Blake. Yeah. Thank you. Nobody wants to look at me, Blake. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Blake. Just think millions of people could be watching you right now. Makes me scared. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll get back to it. Tell us a little bit about yourself and why you would like to be a representative to the Prosser School Board. Um. Well, I'm 17, almost 18 now. Um. I want to be an OB nurse when I in the future, and I have lots of siblings. I like to spend time with family. Um, after school, I do babysit two little babies for the fun of it. And my reasoning to be representative is to like get myself out there and get loose of my anxiety and start new things, try new things. It's always good to push yourself a little bit. Yeah. Christina, I'm sorry. I didn't hear. What would you like to be? An OB nurse. OB nurse. OB nurse. Okay. Thank you. Christina, what are some recommendations that you'd be able to share with us about how we can make Prosser School District a better place? You know, I never really thought about how to make it a better place. I just see that it's it goes well for me. So I see it as it, it's good. What about your peer group? Do they like school too or? I would say so. Okay. You guys want to jump in? Still writing. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> um, if a community member or student came to you with a concern about something taking place in school, what would you do with that information? <clears throat> I guess like talk to like who I do these things with like if I were 
how do I explain it? Um, like if we were like a, a group, right? Like a team, we would talk as a team on what we would do about it. So let's talk with other other student reps. Is that what you're referring to as a team? Yeah, like us representatives are uh, applying to do this, like talk to them about it. Great. Um, Christina, please tell us about the activities that you've chosen to participate in. And uh, we would like to know if you would be able to participate in board meetings on a regular basis. This is my first activity that ever participated in so okay. something you got big three times <laughs> yeah and i would join participate in the board meetings regularly okay so you're not involved in any school clubs or no. anything okay so you'd be available on wednesdays then yes okay my turn mm -hmm. our work revolves around serving students and what ways did you offer feedback to the board about our kindergarten through Twelfth system, and what ways will you seek input from others? Um, like speaking to you guys about it. So one thing that happens when you're a student rep is people will come and tell you things. Like, me. like they might come and say, like, this is just kind of a silly example, but uh, the food in our cafeteria, you've got to do something about the food in the cafeteria. Or maybe it's like, you know, some of the kids have complained about dress code, different things. So they might come to you with those things. So I think that's like what might, how might you um, provide feedback to the board about those things? Like if people, because people will find out you're the board rep and they'll come and they might complain about something or tell you something they don't like, or maybe something they do like. So what would you do with that information is kind of what that question is asking. I would speak to my team as well. Just talk to them about how, what we could do about it or who to speak to. Our board operates with the working understanding that we do not surprise one another. In what ways will you seek to work with the district leaders before concern is brought to the board? Like speaking, like, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is a similar thing that Deanna was talking about. So if somebody comes to you and says, hey, guess what? I heard that Keene Riverview is infested with rats, right? Yeah. And then maybe we don't check into it. And then at a board meeting, we say, guess what? Keene Riverview is infested with rats, which, <laughs> you know, but so, <laughs> so all that to say that is there a verification process or when there, when it concerns, when a concern comes up, who do we talk to about it before we bring it up at a public meeting um, so we don't have to deal with rumors? Like, what would we do? Yeah, yeah. What would you do if somebody came to you with a, you, you know, you might have, you might think it's a tall tale, but it I, could be true. I probably would think it's a rumor <laughs> unless I like heard personally from you guys, like what's going on because you guys know what's going on and not other kids because other kids would hear things and then mm -hmm. just make it worse because you think you'd feel comfortable saying mr ellis you know i heard um, at lunch that riverview is full of rats is that true do you think you could, you could come and say that so he could say wow that's a rumor thanks for telling me about that so I can maybe put an end to that rumor because there's no rats at King Riverview. I could for him. So, because that would be really helpful if you heard that. Yeah. If you could come and say something to him about it. Yeah, I would. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you wouldn't be comfortable doing Yeah. It. Yeah, good. And there's other people you could let know too. Yeah. Yeah. Or you can go to your principal or 
Yeah. Is there anything you'd like to add um, that we didn't ask? No, I think that's it. All right. Do the board members have any other questions? I do, Christina. Have you, I apologize, Jason, to interrupt you. Go ahead. Oh, I was late coming in and I apologize. We were at a Christmas party for a board that my husband was on and trouble in the driveway. Somebody was trying to move their car so we could get out. <laughs> and uh, what grade are you in? Huh? I'm a, a senior. Junior. A senior. A senior. <laughs> a senior. Well, good for you. Yeah. yeah. I do have a couple follow up uh, questions, Christina. Um, and they they kind of follow along with the a little bit of five and six. Um, so the way I feel a board rep, you know, can help us out is that they can articulate and promote, um, you know, student issues or or perspectives. Um, and since you we kind of already did some of these questions, but. I think in addition to that, as we look through the agendas, you know, as we get a board packet or an agenda and um, reviewing the items on our agenda, do you think you can come up with questions and or comments or concerns related to our board agenda from a student body perspective? Yes, I think I can. Okay. <laughs> For instance, tonight, after we're done talking with, with you kids, we're doing it's a care Solar service agreement, which is like an online, um, uh, mental not, health. what's it? Mental health. Yeah, it's it's well, it's an online mental health service. Do you, from your in your opinion, is that something that is help would be helpful or is it unnecessary? Yeah, it would be helpful. So then, in the future, was is that something that you could look at and say, you know, well, this is something I need to talk about or uh, bring up, or if you hear about something, you know, this is something you guys need to look at. Yeah. Be willing to say that to yeah. us. Good. Thank you. Maybe you could take it to the some of your friends there at the high school and say, "Hey, this is something we're talking about as a board. As a board, um, what do you think about it?" And maybe get some input from friends and other students um, so that you could bring that back to us, so um, we could hear the student voices on on um, some of the decisions that we're making. Yeah. So that that would be very helpful for us. Yeah. I do have one follow-up question, if you don't mind. Um, so as you as you learn, you know, like what uh, Andy was mentioning about certain board items, how would you how would you bring that back into the student body? How would you how would you inform the rest of the student body of the school? Inform them about what? Just whatever we end up talking about. Well, for instance, uh, this care solace. Um, uh, mental health thing that we're looking at tonight how would you take that and inform the like student spread other spread it around and, and inform the rest of the students um, of what you've learned uh or participated in in a board meeting i feel like if they were to like let it put let us put it on like the daily bulletin that we would show to our mustang periods or even like posters around the school um or just speaking it ourselves to the people around us. Thank you. I'm, I'm sure as a student, you're, you probably know kids that have had a lot of emotional problems because of COVID and, and such. And something like this, you as a student representative could get the word out and say, hey, if you know anybody that's struggling, we have something to help them or we're talking about something that would help them. Yeah. You know, if we can help one child, it will be worth. I wonder if Elisa's still has a question. Elisa? Elisa? Have you ever attended or watched a school board meeting before? No. I would just say that you, you, you had told us you haven't really been involved in things, and this is your first time going out. And this is just very brave of you. This was a. I told my yeah. family about it, and they were like, "Really? Like you're doing this?" And I was like, "I, I gotta try something." Good to you. Well, we're glad you tried to jump up there. <laughs> it's uh, 
It's actually a really, really important position. So the board is a governing body. And so within the school district, they really set the rules. And so through your advocacy, you actually can influence a lot of the decisions that these decision makers, elected officials, create for our school system, right? And, and there, are, there are boards out there that don't have student reps. I think that student reps are, you know, really, really important for that, right? We're making decisions that affect students. And so what's the feedback loop from students? Do we ever ask, right? And as adults, we should ask students, you know, their opinion about some of these things. So it's, uh, yeah, the, you know, I, I hope that um, you're, I hope that you're comfortable advocating and comfortable giving feedback, even if you feel like it's tough sometimes, because uh, we'll listen. So, have you ever heard the saying, you don't know what you don't know? <laughs> so, we could think things are going great. And if nobody tells us anything, we're still sort of under this illusion that everything's great. If, if you, your friends, the other reps are like, you know what, things are not great. This is horrible. You guys need to know what's going on, or you need to know, you know, whatever that's kind of what your guys that's that's a big part of what your guys' job will be yeah is is being able to identify problems potential problems and and bring them whether it's mr bailey or us or, or, or mr ellis to somebody's attention to look into so there, there is a, quite a lot riding on it actually so thank you though you did very well <laughs> thank you any other questions guys no. any other questions for us no. <laughs> hey, thank you so much. We'll let you know in the next few days um, about this, who we selected, and then the next step from them. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Dempsey. So this is Noah Dempsey. Hello. Noah. Can you spell your last name? D-E-M-P-S-E-Y. -E Great, thank you. Good evening. How's your day going so far? Pretty good. Oh, good, good. Well, we'll start this off with a bang. Um, why don't you tell us about yourself and why you would like to be a representative to the Prosser School Board? Well, um, I've been a Prosser student since I was in kindergarten. Um, I left briefly my freshman year um, to switch to online because um, the hybrid system that we were working with here wasn't really conducive of how I was learning. Um, so I did leave the district until the last trimester of my sophomore year, which was last year, um, before returning back um, yeah, full time to you know, graduate a Mustang. Um, I and 17, just recently, my birthday was three days ago. Um, thank you. Um, I really enjoy politics. Um, it's one of the main reasons I wanted to do this. I want to have a career in public service. Um, I think that being a public servant to the greater community, uh, the greater world is the best way that I can help people. Um, I'm willing to spread my opinion around and uh, advocate for the opinions of those who I will hopefully one day get to represent. I used to want to spread my opinions around too. And my wife brought that to an end. So. <laughs> so what are some recommendations that you would be able to share with us about how we could make Prosser School District a better place? Um, at this moment, I can only provide the insight from myself and those who I've talked to very vaguely about this. Um, I know that one of the biggest problems that the school um, district faces, um, whether that's uh, my own age, which I'm a junior, um, all the way down to middle school, kindergarten, whatever you have it, I have family spread all throughout, is we have a big, um, there's a big mental health issue going on right now. Um, I know that was discussed at the, um, action plan um, thing that we had going on a few weeks ago. Um, I was there, I was involved with that. Um, I know that personally I've struggled with mental health and the resources were not here. They were not where I spend eight hours of my day, 180 some odd days a year. Um, and so it was really hard to be able to 
not only admit that I had those problems to those who I trusted, but then be able to connect to those mental health resources that I needed. Um, and it, the problem is not just as simple as um, providing the necessary information, it's guiding people, it, it is making them feel comfortable and safe to, uh, to reach out to these sources. Um, because even though I have contacted these resources on a multitude of times for my own reasons, um, it's a hard step. And even in the solitude of my own house, it is a very heavy step that you must take. And so just providing the information is not enough. We need to be able to um, push these ideas out there. So that way that students are better informed about what to expect when they do contact these, if they need them. Um, as well as how the whole process goes. Um, I think that's an important step. If a community member or a student came to you with a concern about something taking place in school, what would you do with that information? Um, it, it, it depends on what the subject matter being brought up is. If it was a personal philosophy or opinion, um, I would confer with them more um, and then see if that's something that a wider population group uh, in the district or the community um, finds to be troubling, and then I would bring it to you. If it was something that was more um, broad, I would discuss, um, I believe there's like a chain of command. I feel like you need to talk to teachers and then to principals, and then I would bring it up to you guys as well. Um, I think it depends on the situation and just kind of assessing what needs to be done in each situation. Please tell us about the activities that you have chosen to participate in, and we would like to know if you would be able to participate in board meetings on a regular basis. Um, well, right now I'm just in SWAT, um, students with advanced technologies, um, just work on computers <laughs> um, after school. We're kind of what you would call nerds. Um, and I do that um, every Wednesday from after school to about 4.30. Um, so my Wednesdays are really clear. So I'm always available for board meetings or whatever. And I'm flexible if there's different uh, day change or whatever it might be. Um, the board's work revolves around serving students. In what ways could you offer feedback to the board about how our K-12, about our K-12 system? And in what ways would you seek input from others? Um, so I know that there's a really big uh, issue when it comes to this, that not everyone's voice is being shared. And I could go ask as many people as I know what they think is wrong. And that's still only gonna be a small percentage of the student population. Um, I actually presented to uh, Mr. Funk, um, I was talking with him a few weeks ago, that I believe that there should be more of a, um, how I described it was there should be more of like a house of representatives to one speaker to the board. I think that um, at least here in the high school, the Mustang period should have someone who can come and talk directly to me about what their class is feeling. And then I can kind of put all that down on paper and organize it and then present it to you. Um, and then maybe have one person from each school. I have no problem connecting with high schoolers all the way down to kindergartners. I have a cousin who's in third grade. We get along great. So I am totally comfortable um, helping with their issues as well as the ones that I see here as well. That's actually a really powerful idea. They used to actually assign, since there are five board members in five schools, they would assign each board member a school. And so that would be that board member school and they would try and stay on top of the information and try and pop in and pop out and meet kids and meet teachers and things like that. So. It's a good, I, I like where your mind's at. It's a good idea. I also also referred to the student, it used to be, there used to be like a um, ASB council mm -hmm. and there'd be a student rep from like each homeroom, but yeah. it sounds like you guys don't do that anymore. Uh, no, not that I'm aware of. Okay. Our board operates with the working understanding that there are no surprises. Uh, what will you, uh, in what ways will you seek to work with district leaders before a concern is brought to the board? Um, I think that um, I was kind of listening to the example you gave before, verifying the validity of something before it's brought to your guys' attention or to the, a broader audience is something that is very important. 
So I think that it's, again, a chain of command type of a thing. I think that if I can verify it locally or be disproven locally, then it's not something that I feel would need to be presented to you. Um, but if it's a concern that someone's like, you know, I've heard that too, or, you know, I've, you know, I've seen it myself, then maybe it's something that needs to be brought forward. Certainly. Is there anything you would like to add or any questions you have for us? Um, no, not that I can say. You had a couple extras. Yeah. Um, I'll do them a little more in order. Uh, I think you briefly touched on it, if you don't mind reviewing again. That, you know, how will you take information from a board meeting um, and disseminate it back into the, the student body? Um, I think it it, it kind of comes down to the idea that I had that I would want to share with a smaller group who then can share with their Mustang period. Um, we go through high school uh, with the same Mustang period class for four years. We form a connection. We form a bond. It's like a family. Um, and I feel that one student would be a lot more comfortable talking to 30 students than one person like myself talking to a couple hundred. <laughs> yeah, I, I have no problem public speaking, but um, I feel like it would be something more personal, more feedback, um, perhaps, because, again, we form those bonds, we form those connections um, through our Mustang period classes. And um, are you able, are, are you willing and able to review agendas uh, prior to the board meeting and come with comments or questions? Uh, yes, I, I'm more than willing and able to do that. Um, you might have me kind of mark a grammatical error or two. I, I do that with the newspaper. It's kind of- We already have one. Kind that of my that. thing. You like it? <laughs> no, I hate it. <laughs> well, Lisa, did you still have one? I don't, but I think Noah and I could have a lot of fun um, copy editing together. <laughs> I had one quick question. Um, we were talking about not springing surprises on the yep. board. And this question makes me think of the comment, see something, say something, mm -hmm. and you sound level-headed enough that you would know the difference between this is something they need to know about. This I better verify mm -hmm. before I bring it to somebody's yes. attention. And I like that. So you have attended and or watched meetings then? Yes, I I have not attended, but I have watched many. <laughs> My mom kind of gets mad at me when she comes home and I have them up on YouTube. She's like, do we really have to watch this again? <laughs> it's funny, I hear the same thing. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Very well. Yeah. Noah, thank, thank you, you for your job, time. Noah. Great job. We have one more? Yeah, I miss, I believe. Bianca, are you on there? Uh, yes, can you hear me? We can. Yeah. How are you doing tonight? I'm good. Um, a little sick, but it's okay. Well, that's too bad. Hope you're feeling better soon. Thank you. Who are we? Uh, Bianca, I miss. Um, would you prefer me turn my camera on? I don't know if you guys can see me. Sure. Oh, okay. Oh, hi. Hi. Go. <laughs> Hello. Hi. All right, so let's get it started. Tell us about yourself and why you would like to be a representative to the board, to the Prosper School Board. Um, I, I think I've always kind of um, been interested in just governance and council of schools in general, just because I know that that's kind of the root of everything that's that's the backbone i think and it's the structure and um whether or not it's really handled well um with the students um it just it doesn't make for a good community i guess and i think that there's so many things that we could be doing together that we kind of miss and i just i i've i've been aware of a lot of things and I was never the one to speak up, let alone speak. I was very quiet until my freshman year. And I took that just high school in general as an opportunity to get involved with like ASB, um, 
officer positions, uh, parliamentary procedure, things like that, that kind of handle what that would be like. And it's become a little bit of a passion of mine. Um, I, I do really, really see a huge importance in everything you guys do. And I wish that students really took that upon themselves to contribute and create better community through communication. Thank you. So what are some recommendations that you would be able to share with us about how we can make Prosser School District a better place? Um, well, I did have a club idea not too long ago. Priorities and things like that. It was a new school year, kind of got lost, but it had it actually had to deal with um, at least some student board members, some anyone who did join. I was applying, obviously. Um, so it did kind of focus around at least some people attending meetings or whether that be officers or anyone who kind of takes the extra step to attend meetings and really, really think of it with all of our best in mind, kind of discuss it, what we can do. Um, also get feedback and suggestions, ideas, anything from staff, because there's just, there's a lot of things that we need to fully come together and work. And I really did hope that um, there would be some sort of council or um, a group of people, more than just three representatives to pay attention and really say anything that they feel is necessary, but also anything that we could do to help you guys or our staff or anyone in the community who probably should should be more involved but doesn't know where to start or how to get involved I guess um I just just bettering each other by communicating thank you Bianca uh hi I'm Peggy and uh, if a community community member or a student came to you with a concern about something taking place in the school what would you do with that information? Um, I think depending on what it's involving, I would kind of sit with it for a second, really think about it. Um, I think there's a lot of questions that I would ask because there's, it just depends on what it is. Sometimes we can't, we can't change our focus. Sometimes things are just a little out of reach. Um, some like we we're, I was hearing earlier, um, the small town talk, if it's credible, if it's honest, if if it should be repeated, if it should be, um, just if I hear it, do I just go say it right away? Um, but I think it would have to start with the, the lowest of the high, I think. It, it should be going in a ranking, I guess. Um, who, who does it support to? Who does it support? Who is it involving what what group of people will handle that and there's there's a lot of things that we're like going to the wrong people for I I just it would have to really depend but I definitely think it would have to go from levels okay please tell us about the activities that you have chosen to participate in and we would like to know if you would be able to participate in board meetings on a regular basis. Um, so, so like activities like clubs? Yeah, just whatever you are involved in at school. Um, I was vice president my freshman and sophomore year of my class and I really loved it, but I, I don't know, had other, other things I wanted to try out. Um, I did, uh, parliamentary procedure novice parley and I was chairman of that and then later became um, chapter treasurer and I love that um, I also I've been at FCCLA for quite some time now I think since eighth grade but um, my leadership kind of started more recently and I was um, chapter vice president for that and um, now I'm kind of I've, I've always kind of wanted to do this, I think, since like my junior year last year. Um, I didn't get the chance to really hop on it on time, but that's that's more of where I'm at. I've been in cheer for three years, and 
it honestly has been something that taught me a lot of skills that I could take here and I I would be able to attend regularly. I don't think that there's anything that would be, yeah, no, there's nothing that would really be preventing me. Okay, thank you. Our, our, the work of our board revolves around serving students. In what ways could you offer feedback to the board about our K-12 system? And in what ways will you seek input from others? Um, I think I, I, I will, what, uh, Noah is his name. He was saying earlier, mental health is something we see terribly with young, young people. And I think that that's something that we should definitely get on more too. But, um, I really think that a general, like communication, just openness, the, the things that we can observe within all schools from K to 12 and see exactly where people lose that thought of communicating or advocating or speaking up or saying what they need because that's crucial to what you guys get to help us with. Um, and then did you ask how, I'm sorry, I can't remember the full question. That's okay. If, so um, say there was some issue that had come up, how would you seek input like from your fellow students? Um, I think I would, um, I would definitely ask around like, hey, how are you feeling about this? Like, is there anything that you personally have observed or witnessed that kind of told you this is something that contributes to the problem um, because I do know a lot of people are very willing to talk with their peers but I think it stops there so I know there's a lot of people who would be able to share things and I think asking around making sure that you have um, a good assessment of what the students are thinking um, I would also even ask staff and my parents what they think of it and I would come back to you guys with more than just my thoughts and who I'm talking to, because I mean, our community is more than that. And I would, I would really hope to get as much um, input from others and then bring it back to you guys. Thank you. Okay, Bianca, our board operates with the working understanding that we do not surprise one another. In what ways will you seek to work with district leaders before a concern is brought forward to the board? Um, active communication in general is something that I think could definitely uh, cause problems between students and administration. Um, you know, one thing travels before it gets to you that spreads. That's something we, we definitely need more awareness on, but clear communication, honest communication, consistent communication, and community um, community focused communication as well. I, I do think that if it's going to stay consistent, it needs to stay relevant as well. And it it should always be what our general focus and efforts are going towards. Um, so I would, I would hope that it would be able to go back and forth with ideas or um, just, just the things, you know, if say you're hearing things at school, um, things that it's definitely something that we could work with. I would probably message whoever I could or communicate that to anyone and just be like, hey, heard this, let's not forget it kind of thing because that, <laughs> that definitely happens. It does. Is there anything that you would like to add or have any questions for the board? Um, I don't have questions. I, I do want to add that I have a um, serious, serious focus for building our community the best we can. Um, I know you guys are doing everything to support 
us and everything we have that makes us Mustangs, but we also need to to know a little bit more and take a little bit more consideration of staff, administration, other people, because as students, we're not we're not fully there yet, and that's that's understood by me. But I just I really really do hope to build a community within our community in our school and <clears throat> so the last one for me just to make everything even have you been to or watched any of our board meetings um yeah i do like watching the board meetings and i have attended a meeting before okay thank you thank you a couple more uh bianca for me this is jason um how will you inform the student body on board meetings? So as we go through discussions, how are you going to re relay uh, that information back to the students? Um, well, with working with so many clubs, kind of focus on that um, sort of thing, make sure that I let the clubs inside of our school who are things and um, just awareness, I would make sure that they were, um, I heard Sina say that's a great idea. Um, so, oh, I can't hear. Something's yeah, happening. Yeah, your yeah. internet connection was really, was really rough there for a minute. Can you try and talk a little bit again so we can see if we can hear you? I find repeating. <laughs> Yeah, she can't understand. Yeah. Nope, not getting any better. She's hearing that. Can you hear us? I almost there. Uh, I actually clicked out of the meeting earlier. It looks better now. Oh. It's Sometimes if you can turn your camera off. Huh? Yeah. Bianca, try turning off your camera. So maybe your, your sound is better for us. Okay, I disconnected my phone from the Wi-Fi too. Okay. Wow. Yeah, that's oh, way better. Yeah. Clear. <laughs> <laughs> so I apologize. Would you mind repeating your answer, or would you like me to repeat the question? Uh, could you repeat the question, please? Yeah. So, um, how will you inform the student body on board meetings? So, what we discuss here, um, how we re relay that information back to the students. Um. Uh, that was kind of the main focus of that group I was hoping to get going, but um, with all of our clubs and all of our programs that we have focused on kind of sharing these things, I would make sure that they were aware, um, especially the uh, clubs like that, but I would make sure that I also spoke up on these things and I would make sure people knew what was going on. Um, and like Christina said, the bulletin, I thought that was a great idea um, because honestly, it's kind of empty and why not, why not use that as the perfect opportunity every single, every single Mustang period to learn something about what we can take back. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, last question for me. Um, are you willing and able to review um, our agendas and come prepared to board meetings with comments or questions? Uh, yes, totally. That'd be kind of fun. Yeah. It's amazing what they call fun these days. <laughs> well, thank you. All right. Any more questions from anybody? No. All righty. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Bianca. We'll be in touch. Hope you feel better. I wonder if she's related to Juan. Probably. Small town, you know. Yeah, it kind of is. All right, so with that done, we jump on to B, which is the Care Sola Service Agreement. Um, so as you all know, we've been talking about mental health and supports for students' mental health, uh, trying to find support for students' mental health, and um, CARES came to my attention, um, and I contacted them, um, 
Care Solace is an agency that connects students to mental health services. Um, though they do the work with the student to help find them the services they need uh, that also work with their insurance or if they don't have insurance, um, they address that, but they're both, they connect the kids within 24 to 48 hours with uh, 24 to 72 hours with services. And it takes considerably longer than that for a student to get connected with mental health services. Um, it is, uh, I was able to get a reference from um, the Central Superintendent Oak in Oak Harbor. They are using it and they're very happy with it. It's not expensive. It's about $5 a student. And um, for that price, I thought it would be worth us trying it. Um, not only does the student get connections, the, 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 the agreement will cover the entire family. We will do provide services for anybody in the family and support them in connecting them to mental health services and all of our staff and their family. So uh, for 7,000 bucks, it sounded like a pretty good opportunity for us to try to get some access for our students to mental health services. I would agree. Any idea where they're out of? I did a little research and it looked like West Coast, but it was very vague. Yeah, I mean, when you see Says, stuff online, you usually find a address. Colorado is where they're based out of, but they're incorporated in Delaware. It's in the contract. Oh, okay, didn't see that. And it is 300, it is 20, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. So this, this service agreement, I, I said we wanted to try them through the end of August. So we'd make sure that our students had coverage through the time they returned to school next year um so that's yeah that's what the service is so this then will be on the next will be on the next board yeah if the board agenda. wants to uh approve it um we'll put it on the next agenda for approval the thing when when i was running or reading through it that i i picked up on was that if we go with something like this it will save a lot of time for staff. Um, it sounds like everybody is in on the app trying to get help for kids. So yes. this would be one central place. Yes. And they might, it sounds like we will get more done for them more quickly with less people having to be involved, like teachers, counselors, principals. I'm sure parents say this kid needs help. You know, that, that's what I picked up on that I thought would be a good deal. Right. And this is a yearly. It, it, this yeah. this cost is uh, reduced because it's not for the full year. Um, so I didn't estimate the full year's probably okay. for our whole district, probably about eighty five hundred dollars, I would guess. Um, but this would be for the <laughs> remainder of the year through August thirtieth, and it's of twenty twenty three. It's uh, it's a twelve month. No, I mean, but it, once if we decide to continue with it, yeah, it's then months. it'd be the full school year. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have a few questions. Um, is this would this be in conjunction <laughs> with uh, what we're currently doing with comprehensive health? So comprehensive mental health. So I know you asked about that contract. So comprehensive mental health, um, that person, intervention person, was provided to us through the Benton County Commissioners. The many quite a few years ago, the Benton County Commissioners said, you know, we didn't have access. So they, we are, we're, are supposed to have a full-time person. Um, comprehensive Mental Health has said, we don't have the staffing and we can't commit that. So you get a person one day, we get person right now one day a week. So we don't pay for the service. Um, the only time we would pay for the service is if a student needed services that was not, um, um, that wasn't on state health, you know, health, like a student that had private insurance, is it normally, we nor we used to not be able to get those services. So we do pay a little bit if we have a student that sees a comprehensive person that has private insurance. Um, I just pay for that because they can't bill private insurance. So it was provided for us, a, it's probably been about eight or eight to nine years ago through the county commissioners, but comprehensive is, keeps pulling back, pulling back, and now we're to one day of one day a week. Um, and that's still, I mean, we have a new person that just got assigned to us again, but, and, and I think that person has been coming regularly, but it's not something that we've ever went out and paid for. It was kind of gift granted to us, but it's 
not really holding true. So could they potentially connect them to comprehensive because it's a service that's available? They could, but it would be in a roundabout way. And what we would probably do is keep kids who are seeing comprehensive and they see pretty much crisis kids, like kids that are in more cri immediate crisis. Um, so they would continue with the caseload they have and still dealing with some of that in the amount of time that we actually have them, which is, like I said, it's a day, one day right now. So we would still continue that contract. Yeah, we don't pay for it. So yeah, years. yeah, we, there's, we wouldn't stop doing anything we're doing. We'll keep okay. whatever we can. Okay. Yeah. Um, I know you say we don't pay for it, but we, I have seen it on the vouchers. So is, that's because that's most kids um, are Medicaid. So if a student okay. is on Medicaid, they can have those services. Okay. But comprehensive does not see patients. They not they used to not see patients that were on private insurance. Okay. But because we're not turning around and trying to bill their private insurance, I use some of my grant money to pay okay. to make sure the students can get services. Because sometimes we have a student that can't might have private insurance, but they can't get the transportation to go to the Tri Cities. Fair enough. Account. Okay. Yeah. Thank That's you. the only thing I pay for. It's usually three, 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 four hundred dollars at the most. Okay. Each uh time they bill us. My next question on this program, um, who will administer this and how, how does how do we get like, I don't know, I don't, I don't even know if we can get it, but how do we know if it's being utilized or if it's a success? They have data, they have data. I mean, we wouldn't technically have data on whether a student's actual counseling was successful, but the them working with students, case managing, connecting them with services, yes. They, we have, well, I will have, we'll actually have access to a dashboard where we can see that. And our counselors, principals, our school staff will 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 know, will be trained on how to connect with the service. And we they have flyers, parent flyers in multiple languages that'll go out. So parents can like I ask them, do you guys have a fridge magnet? Like, and they and she said, Oh my gosh, that's such a good idea. Um, and so like we it, uh, we can have those made and mm -hmm. the parent can stick it on the fridge and there's that number that they could call because we can do the connection or they can call directly themselves. And That'll looking be... at the sec first page of like all your information, <laughs> is that like a flyer yeah. poster that could be yes. hanging up at the yeah. school? Mm -hmm. okay. It's like, it's their parent flyer that goes out to, we would make, we would send that out to family. <laughs> We could post it. We could also put it up as posters. Yes. And then the, the second part, kind of that, you can see there's kind of that down. You can see yes. the services. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you. The, the, also the page in the PowerPoint that has like the little colored half wheel, yep. that's also part of their dashboard. I have, I have concerns that really what, I mean, it's for the, I mean, it's $7,000, but it's, and it's, so that's, it's not a great expense, but it seems like it's really just an, a more elaborate Google. It's not a mental health service provider. It's just connecting people um, with mental health service providers. But, and I'm trying to see where you, you said within 72 hours. Um, so, I mean, so they would, this is a service that would like call up. Prosser Memorial Health and say, hey, we need to get, you know, student X in for, you know, a mental health evaluation or a consultation. Or are they going to use their own people? Because I didn't see that in the information. And I, so I don't know how they could get somebody in faster when, you know, right now the waiting period is, you know, six months to get an appointment locally. Well, uh, it, it in my conversation, in my uh, conversation with them, their their job is connecting. It is connecting kids to services and getting them services. We have a huge problem getting kids connected to services. Yes, um, because for, for multiple reasons. So they have a multitude of providers, and it may be someone who is seeing a student online. It may be somebody that goes see in person. It depends on the needs of the student or the parent or the family member or the staff member, whoever's asked for that. Um, in the reference that I got from Oak Harbor, they have been, like, they've been very successful in their students getting services. They're really happy with it. Um, I have some grant funding specifically around safe and healthy students. And because we're struggling and I have not been able to get a provider that would provide direct services to our students, for me, it's worth, I think it's worth trying 
East Valley is using it too. Right? There's a lot of districts that are using it. I I, I don't know that I, she told me East Valley, but. Could we, because I would be interested in East Valley's perspective because Oak Harbor is, you know, in an, closer to a metropolitan area where there would be, you know, significantly more providers. It'd be interesting to see, you know, East Valley, how, how it's working for them and where their students are being sent for services. I, is it I, mostly telehealth or? I can ask them for some districts that are more rural to see how to, and find out what they feel like their success rate has been. Okay, well, we can't approve it tonight anyway, so that yeah. would be good to hear some feedback. Sure, I'd be happy to do that. You guys have questions down there? Well, sounds like a good. I, I don't know that it's, you know, as good as having a face-to-face -face with somebody, but if you can't provide a face-to-face, -face, it is yeah. what it is. So. Yeah, there, there are gaps to the service. And so I would ask you just to consider that, that just knowing that there's somebody out there who can help is a gap that we often encounter. Mm -hmm. And so when there's a referral or when there's a concern or a teacher encounters something, mm -hmm. they may not know how to deal with it. And our counselors actually may not have a list of uh, services provided through the county or even private, private service providers uh, that they can refer a student to. Uh, depending on the situation. And so, um, yeah, n knowledge is power. And so just having access or having somebody who has access to that and also having, um, you know, people that we can say, hey, is there anything out there in our area? Uh, here's, you know, here's what we're dealing with for for educational staff and students and everybody else. There, There's also that I would say, as we heard tonight, almost a stigma attached to some of this mental health stuff. So it allows it um, in some ways to be more discreet, um, you know, for the student and the parent and uh, for those involved in that, just in case they don't want to, you know, broadcast it out there about like, hey, I'm having mental health issues or, hey, my son's really struggling. Um, so I, I think that that's a benefit too. Um, in the you know in the scope of a forty million dollar budget, um, even though every cost is a consideration, I think we you know some of that is really trying to balance potential value added, um, and there there's risk in every there's risk in curriculum adoptions. Are those going to be you know return the a return on investment? Um, so. I ju um, just think about it and consider it. We'll try and get more information. Yeah, and if I can, if I'm able to get some information sooner, I'll just, I'll email that out to you guys. Okay. And then I guess my other questions would be, I don't want to, if this is adopted, to stop with this. Um, maybe we need to discuss, you know, forming a mental health committee within the school district with parents and teachers to, you know, to you know, bring in speakers about suicide awareness, bring in speakers about the stigma of mental health. I've, I don't want to say, okay, well, we spent $7,000 and we have the online network that will connect you with somebody. So we checked that box of mental health and we moved on. I think it needs to be an on, ongoing work. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. I mean, at the state level, advocacy with our uh, legislators, I think at the at the regional level to uh, try and try and create a conversation with the educational service districts and see what services they can provide. And then even within our area to see if we can partner um, with a district around us, Grandview, Mabton, districts that are in need of the same services and see if we could go in on something together. Um, so Sunny, I, uh, Sunnyside just had a mental health night where they had community resources available for parents and families in English and Spanish and what resources they have. So I love that idea, Matt. Maybe you could reach out to Sunnyside and see what yeah. they're doing and see if they would, you know, walk us through their process and we could partner with them. Yeah. All right. Anything else, guys? I'm good. All right. Well, then, next thing on the list is an executive session. What do you think we'll go an hour? Uh, probably it is to discuss the interviews tonight. Um, so maybe half, half hour. an hour. Yeah. 
So we're going to enter a new executive session at eight o'clock. We should be done by eight thirty. Um, no action. No, we're taking action. Aren't we going to pick student board representatives? We discuss no. it. We'll have to pick them in. No, there will be no action tonight because we'll have to swear them in. Um, at at some point, uh, so there will need to be another loop back around. Um, and it's also if there's somebody that isn't a candidate, I'll have to notify that person that they're no longer in the running. And so we can take action to a point um, at a different meeting, uh, just so it's uh, you know there there isn't any. Um, immediate action to the to the students. They're not here, and we can't really spur them in either. But how are we going to vote then at the next meeting for them yeah. and select and announce them? Yeah. So the board will take action to appoint them at the next meeting, and we'll invite those students. And if a student's not um, not selected. Uh, we can work with that student to say, you know, you, you won't be voted to be appointed on the board um, at the next meeting, or I, I will, is the kind of the intermediary. But the, it's to review the applications and to discuss the interviews tonight. All right, everybody good with that? Yeah. All right, we're going to go into executive session at 8.01. If you want to cut us off, Blake, that would be great.